Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing another disassembly service here on another ultralight model made by Shimano. So this is the uh, Custom 1000. It's ball bearing, rear drag, system reel. Uh, you know, it's it's really uh, just a staple, uh, you know, for ultralight reels of this generation in the 1980s primarily. Uh, but this is one of uh, four different ultralights that I have uh, and I use regularly for uh, stream fishing for trout, actually. And uh, th this one hasn't had a service in a little while, so I wanted to put it up on the bench and, uh, and take it apart and clean it and see what kind of shape it's in on the inside. And we'll talk about it on the way. So we're going to start with getting this handle off here. You can already see I, I got some sand on here from the last time I used this. I actually don't remember the last time I used this. I don't believe it was this year. I believe it was last year that this reel was used last. But once again, I will be doing separate videos on this reel. One for the disassembly and one for the reassembly. So you can check both those out on the YouTube channel. And if you have this reel, or if you're thinking of picking up this reel someplace, more than likely used, you can watch this video and make a determination as to whether or not it's something that you want to invest in, or if it's something that you even want to attempt to try to work on. The one thing about ultralight reels is all the pieces and parts are pretty small, so it's really important to have parts trays nearby because they're just small pieces and parts. And the one thing that I've mentioned in some of the other previous videos that I've done recently on some of the other model reels that are similar to this is they all pretty much work the same. The main differences have to do with whether or not they have ball bearings or not primarily, or they have a quick fire uh, trigger up here, uh, where, whereas this one does not. So, you know, those are pretty much the biggest differences. Most of the drag stacks are relatively the same and all the other components and whatnot. So three screws in these positions here that have to come out. Like so. And I have one more of these reels that I'm going to do after this one, the Custom X1000. It's just a slight step up from, from this model. It would appear that we've got a, a slotted screw down here. I guess I lost that screw somewhere along the way. But yeah, I've been using these reels for quite a while now on streams, small, small tributaries for trout fishing. There's a shorter screw there at the bottom. Make note of that. But Shimano is such a great company, and they make some of the finest gear out there, really, for all different kinds of fishing. So we've got a bushing here. We've got a few different pieces and parts here that we're going to have a look at. But as you can see, very dirty right there. Okay. These reels get used. I mean, when I use them, I use them, and I also service them. So, so yeah, we've got a bunch of... You know, gunk on there. We're gonna. We're just gonna put all these in the tray here. We're gonna hose them down. So yeah, we've got a couple of different washers here. I can't tell if it's two or three. Some of these vary a little bit. I think it's only two washers from what I can tell here. Yeah. Okay. So we got a cam. And we got a main gear. We'll see how easy it is to take out. And then we've also got a clicker down here. It needs to come out. And it would appear that this main gear is a little stiff, a little difficult to come out. And that's not surprising. So it would appear that this main gear is really just having a hard time coming out. And that's not in a complete unusual process. And so we're going to use a, a punch here to, to take that out with gently, of course, because we do not want to bend or break anything here. And we're just going to take a small, small little hammer to that and pop out like that. 
Okay, we're probably going to go over this with some 4.0 steel wool and try to clean that shaft up the best that we can. I do find that these punches are handy sometimes working on a lot of different fishing reels. But there's our main gear and you know you can see it's it's not in bad shape but it's definitely in need of some cleaning. I do believe the last time I used this reel was this time last year actually. I, I don't believe it's been out at all this year uh, thus far. And a lot of the time I like to do this, this kind of service after the season is over in the fall time, but uh, there's just usually not ample time for me to do that uh, with my own personal gear and whatnot. So that's why we're working on it now. So now that we have that piece out, there are two clips here that need to be removed. And they're really, really hard to see. I mentioned this in the other real videos of the reels this size here. So there's these two clips and really the best way that I have found to take them out is just to punch it out with a couple of these small precision size screwdrivers. And sometimes you got to work at it a little bit, but eventually you can pry them down enough that they'll stretch and they'll come out. Kind of, they kind of bounce back and forth a little bit. We'll try the other one here and see if we have a little bit better luck with that one. But this is what holds the block in place, basically, in position. And a lot of the time, what ends up happening is, is you end up getting a lot of, you know, crud and grease, old grease, attached in these grooves here and sometimes it's just really really hard to loosen it up. I'm actually gonna hit it with a little bit of WD just to clean it up a little bit because I really can't even see what I'm doing. Take a toothbrush here and clean off some of that excess grease and get that out of there. And we'll try again here. I know it's out, I just can't see it because it's stuck underneath there somewhere. There it is there. Very, very small rings, okay? So you don't want to lose those, so make sure you keep those in your, in your parts tray. So now we can pull that drive shaft out and we're going to clean that piece up really well. Also make note that there are a couple of washers here up at the top. There's like a thicker washer on top and then like a little copper thin washer underneath or a brass one. All right, you don't want to lose those parts. We've got a block here. We're cleaning up everything on this reel uh, so we're not going to worry about trying to, you know, save certain parts from being cleaned or anything like that. We're, we're just going to get into the whole thing. You know, the one thing about these small reels too is that they, they just acquire a lot of dirt, a lot of debris and stuff. And, you know, it can really impede how smooth they work, you know. So take that off there. This is a 10 millimeter nut. It's not cr uh, reverse threaded. So that's one little thing to note. Rotor's going to come off. We're going to double check, make sure there aren't any, any washers or anything. So yeah, we've got a, a, the, the one ball bearing here, our main bearing. Okay, so we've got two set screws that are going to come out of there now. Like so. And these bearings, sometimes you have to hit them with a little bit of penetrating oil. And they usually need a little bit of persuasion being pried up like so. 
Okay, so there's our bearing. Okay, make note that in this case, the bearing, there's a shield here on top facing towards you, you know, facing upright, and then the bearings are actually exposed on the bottom. And that's just how this happens to be. Uh, the main reason for the bearing, the open side facing down, is so that you don't get dirt or debris in there. The downside to it is, is when you flood this with oil after you've cleaned it, the oil will ooze down eventually. So that's just one thing to note on that. Okay. And then we've got a series of some other little pieces and parts here that we need to be careful of and make sure that we don't lose them. Now, in this case, with this setup, you can pull the rest of this assembly out like so here. Okay. On a couple of the other reels that are similar to this, they have additional pieces and it's a lot harder to pull this out from underneath. Okay. But in this case, it works okay. So this piece here, this plastic piece, I try to avoid uh, taking this piece off as much as possible. It, you can take it off, you know, with a pair of uh, pliers. It's just plastic, but uh, I have actually broken them before and also have stretched them to the point where they just don't function properly anymore. So I'm actually going to leave this one, you know, it, it, it'll come right off right now, but, you know, you don't need to have to try to uh, pry it out every you know, every single situation. There, what, there was another uh, reel that I worked on just the other night where I really did have to pull it off because there were too many other pieces uh, in this stack. It wasn't a ball bearing version. Okay, now that's all these pieces here. It's looking good. Now we've got our drag stack and we want to undo that part of the assembly. So we're going to take this screw out from underneath here. And we're going to lay out our drag stack. Definitely going to be doing some cleaning. And that's what I'm going to be doing off camera with this reel is a lot of cleaning. And then when we come back, we'll talk about the cleaning as we go to rebuild and reassemble. Okay, so we've got two washers in here. There's usually a, a plastic nylon Teflon style washer and then a metal washer. Okay. And the Teflon one goes on the bottom there. And then we've got two springs here, okay. And then we've got our drag stack right there, okay. And there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. You can either punch this out with a screwdriver like I'm going to try to do right now. You don't want to lose these washers, and you also want to make note of the orientation of these washers as well. Okay, so you can try prying it out with a screwdriver. A lot of the time I find myself resorting to a pair of needle nose sometimes to try to get a better grip on it. But there's a lot of washers, little washers at that on this stack here. Okay, and we'll take these off one by one like so. We've got two keyed washers. And I mentioned this in all the videos that I do on rear drag system reels. They, yes, they all do accumulate oil and grease at the base. That is normal. That is just what happens. And that is also equally important why you really want to try to do regular maintenance on those reels as much as possible because that oil will make your drag slip over time, usually. So. And, you know, a little bit of oil is not necessarily a big deal, but when you get a lot of oil, like this is pretty, soaked pretty good here, you know, so we're going to want to dry it up and clean it up the best we can. And there's probably one last washer down here, I'm guessing. Yeah, there it is right there. One little spacer washer. I want to take that out right there. Okay. So we've got our drag stack all laid out here. We've got our reel taken apart completely with the exception of the dog and the spring here. There's no need to take that piece out. What we're going to do is we're going to spend some time cleaning, uh, maybe with a little bit of degreaser, uh, a little bit of WD-40 on these parts here. We're going to let that soak in and on these parts as well. Okay. And some of these parts across here as well. Okay, we're going to let that do its job. We're going to come back with clean pieces and parts ready for reassembly. And uh, we'll, we'll be getting this reel back out fishing again, hopefully pretty soon. So 
Thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please make sure you do subscribe, hit the notification button, and that way you will be getting all the updates as to when there are new videos coming out, such as the reassembly video on this Shimano Custom 1000. We'll see you next time.